Hey guys, welcome to the second season of Actors You Are Enough. I am your host, Amy Linden. I'm also an actor just like you, with over 120 IMDb credits that consist of acting and directing. I am your mentor. I am your biggest cheerleader. I am your Russian skating coach of the acting world. I've coached over, I don't know, a million actors all over the globe over the last 29 years. Right now I have 56 network series regulars, an Emmy winner, an Imogen winner, and if you listen to me, that might be you too. Or maybe you just want to work. Join me every week for industry gems, acting advice, and tips on how to be a more confident actor and human being. Whether you're just starting out actors or you have credits under your belt, this podcast will empower you because you are enough. The people that are working are not necessarily better than you. So don't look at them like, like, you know, we all have friends that work all the time, right? Even those fucking people. No, I'm just kidding. But we have friends that work all the time. It doesn't make them better than you, okay? So can we clear that up? It just makes them better at business than you. It makes them better at auditioning than you. It makes them better at reading than you. It makes them better at self-tapes than you. It doesn't mean they're better. I don't care how you got there. Nothing I hated more was when my teacher used to go, so Amy, or he used to go, Levine, that was my name in college. So why don't you tell the class in that one moment how you got there? Well, that's my freaking secret. Once you let that secret out of the bag, I don't know if it's going to work again. Don't be telling people how you got there. It's like baking a cake. You got there and like you baked it. You can't always explain your process to people and you shouldn't have to. I am looking at whether or not you're there. I am the result police. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you how to fix it. I'm also your booking doctor. I will tell you how to fix it. Doesn't matter how many people you've trained with because Lord knows I've trained with like all of them. Guys, I've been acting since I'm 10 years old. I used to jump on a train at 16 years old because my mother and father weren't interested in me being an actress. So I used to jump on a train to study in New York City at the neighborhood playhouse, Meisner. I studied Meisner all through my childhood. And then, and then when I was 17, um, my parents sent me to London to study Shakespeare. Pretty crazy, huh? Then I also have a Bachelor of Fine Arts from Syracuse University. And I studied with Stella Adler herself. And Harry Master George, who trained Ray Liotta, and on and on and on. Who the fuck cares if I'm not booking? Who cares? It doesn't matter who you've trained with. It doesn't matter. It matters now. Like, what are you doing now? Are you showing up? Do you know how to get to a script? What I realized was that it was my reading comprehension skills. It wasn't my acting. And if your reading comprehension skills are bad, then nobody is ever going to see if you're a good actor. Hey, I don't know about you, but you know my SAT test scores were really low. Anybody else? Well, if your SAT scores were not low, then you are an anal analytical person. So then you're in your head a lot. So if your SAT scores were very low, then you're emotional and you're just not technical or you're a shitty test taker like I was. Reading, 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 reading. I'm asking you guys, guideline one, to read it and read it and read it. And please do not give yourself the part. Once you give yourself the part, it's done. How are you ever going to see the whole script if you're starting to act it? You are the missing piece to the puzzle. If you could think like the writer, not the director, life will change drastically. I'm going to say that again. If you could think like the writer, not the director, things will change drastically. Stand outside as long as you can, you guys. See what the writer's intent is. And then be that missing piece to the puzzle.
Because until you're a series lead, you're just not that puzzle. Until you're starring in it, you're not the puzzle. Everything less than that is the missing piece to the writer's puzzle. And I'm the missing piece to the actor's puzzle. I'm your missing piece. I need your instincts to be primary. How many times do you do a script and go, yeah, I thought that the first time I read it. But it can't be just that. It can't be just that simple. It is. Do you know what's not simple? Is you allowing yourself to feel it. That's what's not simple. You allowing yourself to filter it through you and find where you can relate to it. That's what's not simple. But it's certainly simple to understand in the beginning. So whatever your instincts are, are usually correct. Because how many times I'll look at a scene and I'll give some notes and they'll say, oh my God, that's exactly what I thought, but I overthought it. It can't just be that. How can it just be that? Well, it is just that. And you're getting better at reading. Mean what you say, say what you mean. Whatever you read is the truth. If the guy says, I hate you, yeah, he hates you in that moment. It'll change in a couple of lines. Well, my character would never do that. Well, your character does that for that section. Doesn't mean you're doing that throughout the whole scene. They talk about colors, you know. Oh, I want all these levels. Well, if you go where the script's going, you'll have a lot of levels. Just go where it's going. Change when it's changing. That's it. You are a walking, talking, emotional vehicle for the writer. That's what you are. And the moment that you can locate where things are for you, have, with the character coming first, the character is doing this. How can I relate? The character is doing that. How can I relate in a deep, personal way? A quarter of my series regulars have no other training other than this technique, which I find incredibly fascinating. Don't feel insecure because you don't have enough training. Don't feel insecure because you're not living in major metropolitan areas. Don't feel insecure because you don't have credits. You are what people are buying. Work on you. You will pop. You will show up. You will, you will be the cream that rises. They will find you. But they're not going to find you if you're spinning at home in your underwear. It's just not going to happen. So I don't care what you work on after you learn this technique. Get out there and get in the field. Either you're the person or you're not the person. It's that simple. When I was 27, I booked a top of the show recur, uh, guest lead recurring. And the, it was for a woman in her 40s and I was 27 at the time. Nobody could capture the essence of what that character was and it didn't matter if she was 27 or 40, sometimes it matters, you know? So capturing who this person is and representing the strongest you in that role as possible, because they're not going to bring eight people to the producers that are exactly the same. If you're in there auditioning, then you're a taste. You're a taste test. That's what you are. You're a taste test. When I was managing, I had this... Um, actress who never looked like anybody at her auditions and she used to call me all the time Amy why am I here nobody looks like me I said good then you're the dark horse embrace the dark horse embrace that nobody looks like you embrace that nobody is you when she understood that and took it on and became that then she started booking like huge jobs. She got studio. She worked opposite Shaquille O'Neal and uh, Snitch, I Switch or Snitch or whatever she worked with. I mean, like crazy, crazy, huge, huge, huge roles when she embraced herself. Know who you are. Know what you're selling. Know what your gift is and apply that to everything you do with the character coming first. So when do I behave that way? Where is this insecurity for me? Where is paranoia for me? Where are these things for me? After you figure out what the character's doing, which is why I have you read it 10 times. Now, 10 times is tedious as hell, I know. Trust me, I hate doing homework. Every time I do homework, I feel like I'm back in grade school. Like my mother screaming at me to go do my homework. It really feels that way. Like I hate it so much. 
like when I apply this technique and I know it's acting like it's, I'm not the one that created it, but sometimes it feels like I'm not. Cause if I don't do my own technique, I am going to suck. What the technique does is it makes sure that you answer all the questions in the story. It also gets you off book really fast. It also helps you insulate you from other energy, especially if you've had a lot of Meisner training or you're an empath like me and you pick up energy. It helps insulate you so you can create this story and take me on this journey with you that you're creating. You're not reaching to me, you're reaching back to you. Don't reach to me, reach back to yourself. You're the creative artist. And so that's why I think that this technique has taken off so much because it helps you with the breaking down of story and at the same time, it's the philosophy of embridling the power within you. There's a lot of philosophy that comes with booking. And part of the philosophy is, is insulating yourself into who this character is and not being afraid to share it. And those of you that are doing a straight job that clearly keeps you in your left brain, you need longer to get over to your right. Don't fool yourself. Know what you need. Know how long you need. Look at the script, assess it and go, this script looks like it's going to need five hours or this script looks like it's going to need, assess it, put it in your schedule and shut everything down. How are you gonna morph the character through you or feel it through you if you're busy thinking about a fight you had with somebody? I'm positive that the people that are just about to to ski down a huge mountain, they don't think about the fight they had that morning with their husband. And if they think about it for a split second, they're not gonna win the gold. Sometimes it comes down, like if you're pinned a lot, if you're called back a lot, you have a teeny bit of a distraction happening. I call it you being a sliver away. Look, you know, I've been around who makes it, why they make it, how they make it, how fast they make it, and why I didn't make it. <laughs> I know why I'm not a star. It's clear to me. Guys, I am here to make sure you become what you want to be. If that means a working actor all the time, if that means a serious regular, if that means booking leads in films, whatever that means, I'm here to help you. I hope you love this as much as I love doing this for you. Stop worrying about the other guys. They should be worried about you. You want to be hot. Become a booking machine. So hit like, make a comment, and subscribe. Share it with a friend.